topic of this video is finding average rate of change, also known as slope. All right, let's look at a problem. Let f of x equal x squared plus 1. Find the average rate of change, the slope, from negative 1 to 2. All right, before we begin, I want to make very clear that we're going to solve this problem twice. Once using the old way, which is the concept of slope, and using the slope formula you used in older math classes. And the other way will be the way we will use in this class, because that's how it's done in future math classes. I'm doing this on purpose because I want you to see that they are essentially the same process. It's just written differently the way we do it in future math classes. Your job is to understand this and be able to apply the new mathematical writing standards so that you are prepared for the math classes you will see in the future. This is how they do it in calculus. My job is to prepare you for that. So that's why we're solving this problem twice. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and begin. So the old way of finding slope was to use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And in order to do that, you have to have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. But we don't have two points, so we're going to have to come up with our two points. All they gave us is an equation and then these two numbers. So the first thing I want you to understand is that when it says find the average rate of change from number to number, is that these are both x values. This is x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. And if you want to find the y values that go with those x's, you just have to plug into your formula. So for example, if x equals negative 1, then f of x or y would be equal to x squared plus 1. So we get negative 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. If, however, x is equal to 2, then we would have y is equal to 2 squared plus 1, which is 4 plus 1, which is 5. So we now have our ordered pairs. This is the x, and this is the y. So we get negative 1 comma 2, and when x is 2, y is 5, so we get 2 comma 5. Once we have our points, we can plug them into our slope formula. So y2 minus y1. So we're going to say that the larger x value is always going to be the second one, and the smaller x value is always going to be the first one. So that means that this right here would be my x2, y2, and this would be my x1, y1. So plugging in, I'm going to have 5 minus 2, y2 minus y1, over 2 minus negative 1. All right, so now we simplify. 5 minus 2 is 3. 2 minus negative 1 is 3. And so the slope is 1. All right, so this is the old way. Remember, slope and average rate of change are saying the same thing. So we've now found the average rate of change. It is 1. Now we're going to do it the way we will actually do it in all of the problems from now going forward in college algebra, including when you see this in calculus, whether that's traditional calculus or business calculus. All right, the rate of change formula says average rate of change equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And one of the things that you need to get from the diagram that was shown in another video is that the smaller x value is a and the larger x value is b. So when we plug in the a and the b that we're given in this particular problem, here and here, we're going to get f of 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2 minus negative 1. Already we're starting to see some very similar some similarities between the two methods. For example, the denominator here is already exactly the same. But what we do not yet know is what is f of 2? And what is f of negative 1? Well, to figure that out, we need to plug into our function. So let's do that on our side workspace. So we know that f of x is x squared plus 1. So similarly, f of 2 would be 2 squared plus 1, which is 4 plus 1, which is 5. So f of 2 equals 5. And 
using a similar approach, f of negative 1 would be negative 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So f of negative 1 is equal to 2. Now that we know the values of both of those evaluated functions, this and this, we can plug them in here and here. So f of 2, that's just a 5. And f of negative 1, that's just a 2. So instead of f of 2, we'll write 5. Instead of f of negative 1, we'll write 2. And then down here, we still have 2 minus negative 1. Notice that this exactly matches our previous approach. So we get 3 divided by 3, which is 1. The average rate of change is 1. Now, I'm going to emphasize just one more time, this is the way you need to write it. This is the way you need to understand it. This is how it's going to be done in future math classes. I've only given you this as a stair step to help you arrive at the level that I need you to be at for this particular topic in this particular class, because the skill that I'm trying to teach you is how to use this notation to write solutions and find average rate of change.